Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am happy to be with you as always. We are here for an author interview, a new author joining me to talk about the second book in a series um, of four books. Um, Get to that in just a moment. Hope you had a great weekend and that your week is off to a good start. Now that Thanksgiving is over, maybe you had a long weekend. Um, just trying to think of what we did over the weekend after, after you know Thanksgiving that we didn't really celebrate, but uh, we did. We we went shopping on Saturday. We had some errands to run, and so it's really interesting to see what Christmas looks like here in terms of shopping. It's not as crazy as it is in the U.S. You, you know, after Halloween, everything just kind of explodes with Christmas, and they did put some Christmas stuff up after Halloween here. Obviously, they don't celebrate Thanksgiving, so they they don't skip over Thanksgiving. (laughs) But after Halloween, some Christmas stuff did go up. But it's not the craziness like you see at home with just aisles upon aisles of Christmas stuff everywhere. And it's it's interesting to see what they have and, and what they don't. The the gnome craze, I made a million gnomes for our Christmas tree last year. There are gnomes here, Christmas gnomes, and they're adorable. So that, uh, that seems to be fairly global. <laughs> uh, they have fairly what I think of as the kind of American looking Santa Claus, you know, that kind of Coca-Cola looking Santa Claus, because Santa Claus, Father Christmas, whatever he's referred to in different countries doesn't always look the same, right? Sometimes he's wearing green, sometimes he's wearing red, sometimes his outfit is a little different. And I do see a lot of that um, kind of Coca-Cola looking Santa Claus here, but I see a few others thrown in there. So it's been very interesting. And uh, as we hit December, the end of this week, I will continue just, you know, hanging out and seeing what is different here, what is similar, how people celebrate Christmas in Portugal. I'm looking forward to that. At any rate, like I said, we do have uh, an author interview today. Faye Snowden it joined me to talk about her book. It's called A Killing Rain. It is the second book in a series. The first one was A Killing Fire. Let me go ahead and give you the description of this book. After former homicide detective Raven Burns returns to Bird's Landing, Louisiana, to begin a new life, she soon finds herself trapped by the old one where her nephew is, when her nephew is kidnapped by a ruthless serial killer, and her foster brother becomes the main suspect. To make matters worse, she is being pursued by two men, one who wants to redeem her soul for the murder Raven felt she had no choice but to commit, and another who wants to lock her away forever. Again, that is the description of fall, excuse me, A Killing Rain. It is the sequel to A Killing Fire. There's going to be four books, as I said, each based on an element. Faye talks about that a little bit more in the interview. And in this case, I, I, I read it as a, yeah, I haven't read the first one. Um, and you can definitely do that. You can read it uh, uh, without reading the first one. I think you would get... A much better picture of Raven as a character if you read the first one first. Read them in order. That would be my suggestion. Of course, you know, you can do it however you want. Read the way you want. <laughs> but I think that um, there's there's a lot of details in the first book that will go into Raven as a character and the evolution of Raven as a character throughout these four books. So start with the first one. And then, of course, you have to wait till the other two come out. But you have two to read at least, which is always good. I liked this series. It is creepy. uh, It is suspenseful. It is, um, yeah, it's suspenseful and it's got some good, like, sort of, um, 
jump factor elements to it, if you can say that about a book. But again, as you know me, not enough to put me off. <laughs> there was uh, a couple of scenes that made me go, yeah, but not enough that I had to put the book down and just walk away and stop reading. So uh, very good. And on my scale of books that scare the pants off of me. I could read this one just fine. Uh, Raven as a character is really interesting. Her father was a serial killer and he, and she grew up with him. She lived with him. So she's got a lot that she's dealing with psychologically and emotionally. And she became a homicide detective. You can probably figure out why. So she's a very interesting character. She's got a lot of emotional baggage. The first book does not help with uh, another serial killer. Uh, Bird's Landing is crazy. Serial killers everywhere, apparently. <laughs> but she's um, she's not a homicide detective in this book, but she gets drawn back into the case with the serial killer because her nephew goes missing. And I'm very intrigued to see how she continues to evolve as a character, as well as some of the other uh, secondary characters within the book. For instance, her former partner, Billy Ray, who is no longer, also no longer a homicide detective, but owns a bar, I mean, a, a restaurant. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where the series goes, how the characters evolve, and what happens. So let's go ahead and turn to the interview so that Faye can talk more about the book and the series. Hi, Faye. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Glad to be here. I'm glad to have you here. We are going to talk about your book, A Killing Rain. Before we do that, though, uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you a bit. Oh, certainly. So I am a writer. Um, I, of course, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be on this podcast, um, but I've been, I'm a, I'm a writer at heart. I've been writing since my early teens. Um, I grew up in, uh, born in California, grew up in Louisiana, and, to, and today I write about Louisiana. I find that you can't uh, get the South out of your blood. Um, I write noir mysteries, uh, uh, Southern Gothic, very dark right now. Um, and this is uh, the Killing Rain is the um, second book of a series of a Southern Gothic noir mystery um, that I'm writing right now. It's in four parts um, based on the elements. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to get into that uh, soon. Um, but I also write poems and short stories and articles and um, just like I said, just an, an all around writer, writer by heart. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've never really thought about I hear the phrase Southern Gothic a lot, but I've never really thought why is it Southern? Is it specific to Louisiana because of kind of that? aura of mystery that Louisiana sometimes has, or is it all the South? I don't know much about Southern Gothic, except that I've read it, but I've never thought about it before. Yeah, it is a very interesting genre. It's about stories of transgression that uh, looks at our society through uh, things like the grotesque. I mean, think about uh, Flannery O'Connor, um, also William Faulkner, who was the father of Southern Gothic. And like I, it, it's attached to the region because um, it, it looks at how our past sins and our past transgressions. And in South, you had slavery. So it looks at um, things that we did in the past and how it impacts the present. And usually it ruins the present, right? It, um, it uh, wrecks havoc. So it's like kind of uh, dealing with those uh, things that we repress in our society. Um, uh, it, it's about uh, having, having to, to deal with that and you could deal with it in the, in the literature. So you'll see things in Southern Gothic, like um, you'll see things like when, when this genre started in England, right. And they had like these crumbling castles and, and whatnot, but in the South you'll have like ruined plantation, but you'll have that alongside the beauty of the South. So it's kind of like that dichotomy too. Um, usually there is a, a, a damsel in distress. Um, there could be, um, there's corrupt uh, politicians, corrupt institutions, 
Also, uh, usually a corrupt preacher or two in Southern Gothic, you'll see a corrupt preacher or two, but it's all about, um, it's, it's all about taking a look at the things as a society that we've repressed and um, showing how if those things are not de dealt with, it will ruin your present, basically. So that's pretty much what it is. So it's kind of the literary manifestation of generational trauma. You are so good, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> You Not more interesting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're going to take our first break, but I don't know that I've if I've ever mentioned that I send questions ahead of time to the authors so they know what we're going to talk about. They have a heads up, but things always come up during the interviews that aren't on that list of initial questions. And the Southern Gothic question was one of those. So I kind of threw it at Faye and Portugal and California, where she is, are eight hours apart. So it was early in the morning for her. And I am just impressed that she handled that as well as she did because she, it was early. <laughs> and I, I communicate in grunts before coffee. So I don't think I would have been even a fraction as coherent as she was if somebody had asked me a, about a question like that about Southern Gothic or another literary genre. So let's go ahead and take a second break of the podcast when we come back more with Faye. You are listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful Podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful Podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with Faye Snowden about the second book in a series. This one is called A Killing Rain. Let's go ahead and return to the interview. Thank no you problem. for letting me take that tangent. Um, let's let's turn to the books. There's two currently out, A Killing Fire and A Killing Rain. So can you sure. give an overview of the series first? Okay, so um, A Killing Fire, the, the series itself, is it's going to be four books in the series. And like I said, it's based on the elements. And so the elements are fire, rain, and then the next one is going to be air or breath or wind. Um, and then the next one is going to be after that is soil. And, that, and, I, and I already have the one on soil plotted in my head. And it's it's awesome. It's awesome in my head right now. So that's the, those are the books in the series. And it features um, homicide detective Raven Burns, who's trying to deal with her own past and her own trauma, and also um, trying to deal with the sins of her father. Her father is a serial killer. Um, and Raven had some culpability when she was, you know, she feels when she was a toddler because she helped lure some of his um, victims um, unbeknownst to her. You know, she really didn't know what she was doing at that time. But she's trying to find in herself through this whole series. Um, she's trying to find uh, that piece of herself that's good. She's trying to prove that she is a good person. And in doing so, um, I, I just I always say, let the shenanigans begin. So in doing so, she just uh, that screws up in the most fantastic ways. And, and she's just trying to navigate um, how she's um, navigate what she how she feels about what her father did and forced her to do. Um, in the small Louisiana town called Bird's Landing, Louisiana. So, it's a fictional town. I made it up. Yeah, thank goodness, because let me just tell you right now, I am not moving to Bird's Landing. <laughs> <laughs> After yeah. 
you know, I got enough from the first book by reading the second book and no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very interesting uh, place. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to live there either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, but I bet it was fun to build that world. Oh my goodness. It was so fun. It's kind of a mashup of my um, adopted hometown in New Orleans. And it was just, uh, you know, fun kind of, you know, laying out the streets and figuring and doing, you know, I had to do, of course, research um, and, uh, you know, setting up a Billy Ray's restaurant. That was so fun to do and mm -hmm. building all the characters and, and that type of thing. Yeah, it was a it was a fun town to build. Yeah, I bet. Um, so what was your initial inspiration for the series? Um, it, it was kind of personal. Um, I, I grew up, I, and I tell the story all the time, and I feel like people get tired of hearing it. But my parents divorced when I was young. Um, I was around 10, and we left California and moved to Louisiana. Very acrimonious divorce. Um, and I always favored my dad really strongly. And uh, when I was living in Shreveport, Louisiana with my mom, she uh, would always, you know, how moms and dads do, unfortunately, in some cases when they divorce. Um, and she would just disparage my dad. And I would look in the mirror and I was like, man, do I, don't I look like him? And I'm like, if all that stuff she's saying is in him, what does that mean for me? And so um, one day I was sitting at my computer and just kind of thinking about it. I was like, man, you know, and then I was like, oh, that would make a great short story or a great story. And I was like, oh, you have to up the stakes, Faye. You just can't be, you know, like my mom would say that no good. So and so he, I said, what if he's a serial killer? And I was like, ooh, this is good. <laughs> and my dad is not a serial killer, by the way, but um, um, I, uh, that's what the inspiration is, was from the story is kind of looking at how basically the sins of the father, how they're passed down, how does somebody really deal with that when they're that, um, you know, that out in the open, that, that stark, right, that you have to, that you have to deal with. Mm hmm. Well, I am sorry that you had to go through that, but I am also glad that you found a way to channel some of those thoughts and, and you know, hopefully that was helpful in some ways. Oh, yeah. I always say that, um, you know, no matter what happened in my life, you know, it made me the person that I am today. You know, today I do a lot of laughing about it <laughs> and then think so. Yeah, but thank you. But um, it's just, you know, it's just life. Yeah, sure. Um, so then A Killing Rain, like I said, is the second book. And yes. can you talk about, well, let's talk about the murder that's going on in this one. <laughs> yeah. of the story. Okay, so no spoilers. So Raven Burns, after a killing fire, um, returns home to uh, Bird's Landing, Louisiana. And she decides, you know what? I'm not doing that police work anymore. I'm going to... Um, get on with my a regular life. I want to do what I always wanted to do. I, I'm done with that. Um, and so she uh, goes to work in uh, Billy Ray's restaurant. And Billy Ray is her old, uh, a former um, partner when she was a homicide detective. And uh, and then you know, unfortunately, she has a nephew that's kidnapped um, by who they think is a serial killer, kidnapped by a serial killer, and she just has to. Uh, go back into police work in order to uh, rescue her nephew. So she's kind of forced back into doing something that she thought she wouldn't do again. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit more about Raven because she is a very complex character. And um, what about her do you think might resonate with readers? Um, I think the one thing that, that re will resonate with readers is the fact that I think deep down Raven has the feeling that she's not good enough or she's not human enough, or she doesn't have um, that. She has to prove her humanity. And I've always said that, you know, that is something that you get, you know, your right to dignity or your right to humanity and that nobody can take that away from you. And there's the, and you can't prove that, especially 
you can't prove that, especially to people who don't think you're human, right? That's just not, that's not gonna, that's not something you could prove. And I think that just accepting your past, um, accepting who you are and where you came from and making the best of that instead of going through all of these gymnastics to try to, to prove something. Um, I think that, I know she resonates with me. I mean, I wrote her, but then she resonates with me uh, on that level. Like, um, and that's what I'm hoping that she'll learn by the end of the series is that, you know, no matter what she does, she's not, um, that's not her, that goal she wants to prove that she's good enough is not, that's not something you can do, right? You know, you're already enough. So, but we'll see. So by the end of the book, she's going to either become, in the series, she's going to um, take two paths. She's going to make a decision in each book. Um, and and the decision that she makes will determine whether or not she's going to be like her father or it's going to determine whether or not she's going to be a, a, you know, a citizen <laughs> of this, you know, a, 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 yeah, a righteous yeah. person. <laughs> time for the second break of the podcast when we come back we'll be talking about character development how Faye writes her characters how they evolve through the writing etc so stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc book review podcast and i will be right back tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch whatever it may be visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com follow us on facebook and twitter and download us on itunes soundcloud and google play Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with author Faye Snowden about A Killing Rain, which is the second in a series. Both books involve serial killers, and uh, as I was editing and working in the break, the my, my dog, who is a chihuahua who thinks everyone is out to murder us, just started barking at nothing. So uh, I don't know if he's barking at imagined serial killers or not, but probably not. It was probably... I don't know, a dust speck or something, <laughs> but uh, hopefully he won't do it uh, during any of the recording times of the the episode. At any rate, let's go ahead and return to the interview with Faye. When you sat down to write the series and you started thinking about the characters, especially Raven, um, did you uh-huh. have pretty good character sketches in mind or did you let them kind of grow and evolve as you wrote or a combination thereof? It was a common, it was no, I didn't have Raven in my mind because um, the, when, the, when I wrote A Killing Fire, the first character that appeared to me was Floyd and he appeared pretty much whole. I mean, he was just kind of walked up in, I say he walked up in his white suit and his fedora. That's sat down scary, and started, right? <laughs> I know, I started talking to me. I'm going to take <laughs> you away, Sarah. And uh, so he was good. I had him. I did some free writes and some, I caught character interviews with him. And he was done in like a, a couple days. Raven was harder. Um, so I had to pull out all the stops to write her. I had to, um, you know, uh, do like a character profile. I had to do what her dreams were, what her fears, you know, what she had in her closet, what she carried in her pockets, um, lots of interviews and free writes. And just um, she was a really hard character to write. And then I think in the first book, she kind of evolved into a more whole uh, person. And in the second book, I think she's just like Floyd. I have her, I have her down pretty much. 
How about research? You've mentioned a little bit of research in terms of like creating the town and stuff, but what types of research did you do specifically for this book? Oh my goodness. Um, I researched uh, 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 for the first book, of course, you know, the town, how it was, how they get incorporated and how they're founded and what the industries are and, and all that. So I did that for the first book. And I think, um, um, you know, I, in the first book, I had to research the murder weapon and all that. For this book, it was so fun. I had to research trauma cleaners and what they do. Um, and then I also had to, uh, so I watched a, a lot of uh, 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 YouTube videos. I, I read books, I, that, but that, that was a whole industry that I didn't even know. I mean, you kind of know it existed, but I just, you know, you just don't think about it. So that, that was a, an industry I had to research. I also had to research a lot about farming and animals and, and that type of thing. And, and I hate to say this word, but I am a norm mystery writer. <laughs> Slaughter. I had to do a lot on that and, and yep. raising, yeah, raising sheep and, and that kind of stuff. And it just ran to so many interesting things um, as I was doing it. You, I would imagine, are definitely one of those authors whose internet history would be oh, God. questionable if somebody just stumbled upon it. Yes, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know location is one thing that you mentioned, you know, that you grew up in Louisiana, so you write about Louisiana, but are there other autobiographical elements that you include in your writing? The only autobiographical um, element that I've included in that was that that gene, you know, that starting point for the story. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think in this next book, there are there will, you know, and the only thing, some of Raven's character, you know, I was I always felt like I was an outsider, you know, an outsider in high school because I was kind of bookish, you know, and and all that kind of thing and it kind of nerdy and, and, and that, but I think the, this, the, 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 like I said, the seed of the story was the only autobiographical element um, that I could think of in that. Okay. But the next book is going to have, like I said, as I started to say, the next book is going to have a lot more because um, yeah, because I just, um, I want to go back there a little bit. On, on the next one. What can you say about the next book? I know that's really hard with a series like this because you don't want to give too many spoilers away, but can you say anything about what Raven's going to be dealing with in the next book? Yeah, I could say a little bit. Um, I always, I, it always fascinated me too that, um, you know, you know what, what crimes make the news, right? What makes the papers? And I always have, and, and because probably where I grew up, you know, poor neighborhood and everything. And, and then um, it's always um, interesting to me how some crimes, especially of people that um, are uh, disenfranchised, you know, they're poor, they're kind of like nobody cares about. <laughs> and, and, I, and then I put that in quotes. Um, right. I think that I'm going to have some of those, those victims because I kind of want to, I want to, and that as victims, right? But I kind of want to elevate that because I think that if we, as a society, if we did kind of care about what happened to people when they're not um, of, you know, of some socioeconomic standing to, or, or some demographic to, to make the news, I think that we'll, we'd stop a lot more crime in its tracks. Um, you know, I, I'm not an expert on Dahmer, but I know that um, he was, his victims were victims that no one cared about. And he ended up killing, you know, scores of, of people. But, and then there was another serial killer, um, I think it was um, in Texas that did the same thing with, uh, I think it was uh, sex workers and ended up killing scores and scores of people because nobody was really paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that I want some type of element, but I say I want, but the book's going to do what the book's going to do, right? But I want some of that element in the next book. Okay. Yeah, if we paid as much attention to the murder of a homeless person as the murder of a, a millionaire. I know those are two extremes, but... Uh, yeah. 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 Well, in terms of your writing style, are you a plotter or a pantser? 
That's what <laughs> I am. Or a planter. A, I'm a, a what was that you said? A planter. I, I'm a planter. So I'll I'll build a skeleton. Like I'll do the sketch. I, I need to know my like. Some people can write. I know my dear. I love Tracy Clark, my dear friend. She just she's a total pantser, total. And sometimes I'll send, you know, one time on Facebook, I said, just a little itsy bitsy plot. And she goes, no, um, I have to have, I have to sketch my crime out. I have to know who did it, how they did it, the clues so I can plant them through the book. I have to do that. So I know what my crime is. And then for the writing, I will build like a skeleton outline, just a very brief. So I kind of know where things are going. And then after that, I'm pantsing. But I just, um, I call it building the skeleton and then taking the meat and plopping it on the skeleton. <laughs> that's how I that's kind how of see what it ends up as. Yeah. 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 Let's take that final break of the podcast. And when we come back, Faye will be talking about the path that led her to writing fiction for publication. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Faye Snowden. You mentioned that you've been writing for a long time, that it's kind of in you to write, but what made you, what was the impetus that pushed you to decide to try to write, in this case, fiction for publication? Oh, um, I think it was just a natural progression. I know it's not, I mean, it's not like a I grew up from a poem to a short story to a novel. I know it's not like that, but um, I just um, wanted to experiment. I, and I think it was a dare, the first book I wrote. And I call it my baby book <laughs> because it was just, it was a book that I learned how to write a book on or that I learned what I didn't know. And it was so much, even though I'm an English major. Um, and it, so it was almost like I wanted to, as a dare, you know, I, I think I can do this. And that was Spiral of Guilt way many, 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 many moons ago. Um, so that's that's why I tried writing. Like it was it was basically as a dare. The reason that I started writing in the first place was, you know, and I tell this story all the time, too, is that when I was a kid, you know, I love television. I love reading. But of course, there was a lot there was a lot of representation um, in the books and the TV that I read. And I just would take the, you know, I would write fan fiction in my head. Mm-hmm. So on Star Trek, I know they had Lieutenant O'Hara, right? Okay, fine. But on Star Trek, I would like put her center in the in all the episodes and make up stories about her. And then from that, just natural progression of writing them down. And it was just always a love of literature as well. Yeah, if the book that you want to read doesn't exist, then write it yourself kind of thing. Yep. (laughs) Yep. What do you think draws you to writing in the crime, mystery, suspense genre? I think the, um, I think the, what draws me to that is um, a little bit of laziness. (laughs) I wouldn't say lazy, not that we're lazy, we're not lazy, but um, Crime fiction and genre fiction is um, half, not half the work. Okay, fine. One fourth of the work is already done for you. So you pretty much have, you know, there's rules and conventions that you, you know, need to follow. Or if you don't follow, you need to understand why you're breaking those rules and break them in a way that you know what you're doing, right? So they're already there for you. So it allows you to take, I call it, take the reader on a wild ride 
entertain, thoroughly entertain them, but also slip in elements for things they're going to have to think about, things that's going to keep them up at night, things that, you know, you know, things that they can question. It's like the, um, the, the reason for, for Gothic and, and fiction is like to, to make them look at the world in a different way. So it's almost like a, I call it, you know, I have this present. I'm going to give you this present. I'm going to thoroughly entertain you, but there's going to be something good in there for you as well. So our, bad depending on how you think you know you think about it mm-hmm. but it, it's to, to me it's just a way of um of 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 doing that and um another thing is like I, I'm a I'm an English major I have a master's in English and I know that there is a lot of uh, conversation about the difference between literary fiction and genre fiction and people don't take genre fiction seriously but think about the reach right um Miss, uh, mysteries are the second, I think romance is first. I don't know if you know this. Romance is first, the, the best selling genre in the country. And I believe mysteries are second. So if you're trying to, and, and I don't put a message in all my books, I'm not like, you know, I, I'm not like that. But, but if you're writing a book and you want, and you want, you know, you want to get a message across, if you want, you want to get people to think about things in a different way, what better way to do it than something we, that most people or a lot of people are going to pick up? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I get a little frustrated with the literary versus genre argument because my theory is if you're reading, excellent. Mm-hmm. Keep reading, read however you want. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. When, when you mentioned the wild ride and the things that keep you up at night, uh, I remembered something that I wanted to ask you, and that is about the snakes in A Killing Rain. Um, did they write themselves in there, or did you have a plan for snakes? They are, could you ask me about a biographical element? And that's probably one of them. I, I am afraid of snakes. I, they, I fear them. And I was watching um, um, some special or but these, there was this like this shed, this brown shed, and there was like in this mud, it was like a flood. And these men lifted up the shed, and underneath were just all these snakes. <laughs> and it just creeped me out so bad. I just, and I just knew I had to incorporate them in the story. But if you notice, there is a progression without giving any spoilers, and that progression was not planned. Okay. Yeah, it was not planned. I just wanted to have kind of, you know, put some elements in there about snakes. And then I just the progression happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because again, I don't want to give away spoilers. But but with yeah. the second appearance of the snakes, I was like, ah, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the fun thing, Sarah, is that I um, now I'm, I'm getting more. I can look at snakes now because I have to research them. That's another thing I have to research. And um <laughs> And, and, and I'm starting to feel better about snakes, you know, like, have you ever seen there are things, snakes in hats? Snakes in hats? Mm-hmm. If no. you get, if, I don't know if you're afraid of snakes or not, but look up, they're trying to make snakes look more palatable. Oh. <laughs> yes. Makes my yeah. work. And they have these little snakes with these little tiny little miniature hats on. <laughs> but nice. um, yeah, but yeah. So I, but I, I found out that the when as I was learning about snakes and everything, I started to feel better about them. But I still can't. If I saw one, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, some snakes I'm I'm okay with, but I grew up with rattlesnakes, and Louisiana has some very scary snakes. So I, I can yes. see why you would be leery of snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but back to, <laughs> back yeah, to I the know. Hand. Um, in terms of your own journey toward publication or writing or just writing for yourself, even would you have advice for aspiring authors? Oh yes, oh yes. The first thing I always tell aspiring authors is that you have got to read. Um, and I know that a lot of people out there have um, little ones or little kids or families of very busy life and they want to write. Um, and, they, and they're like, I don't have time to read, but consume, consume books as much as you can. Audio books, um, uh, 
15 minutes at night before you go to bed, but you've got to fall in love with reading. Um, and that's just going to inform and help your writing. Um, the other thing that you want to do is um, I, I, I advise writer. I think I got this from Jess Lowry. Um, she talks about just 500 words a day, um, like before, you know, what, and, uh, and of course you would append that to something that you normally do in your regular routine. So sit down if you have coffee, Pepsi, or whatever you have for your breakfast, um, or before everybody gets up, sit down and free write just 500 words a day and just do that practice and see where it gets you. Um, the other thing I would advise is to study the craft. I know that when I was growing up, I didn't write for a long, I didn't study the craft for a long time, even though I'm an English major, it's because I, you know, it was right, you know, writing people say you either have it or you don't, and which I don't believe. I believe that you have to have the willingness to write but and the inspiration to write, but you get better when you study the craft. So I would say study the craft. There are all kind of great books out there. Um, and, and then the other thing is to join a community like Sisters in Crime, Mystery Writers of America, or any other community out there that um, is applicable to what you're writing, because you need, you're going to need that support system. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. you mentioned reading. Um, so when you take the time to read for yourself, what are your favorite genres, genres and authors? Um, my favorite genre, of course, is the mystery genre. Um, I love uh, <laughs> I love S.A. Cosby, Sean Cosby, um, his books. I also love Tracy Clark's. Um, I don't know if you've heard it. I'm sure you've heard of Tracy Clark, right? Uh, her books. Um, I think I'm trying to think of what I'm reading right now. Um, I also, I, because I'm <laughs> an English major, I also uh, like Barbara Kingslaver. Uh, I don't know if I said her name correctly. I'm reading a book by her right now called Flight Behavior, which is not a mystery. It's mainstream literary, um, but it's it's really good. Um, and then uh, got Rachel Housel Hall is another writer that uh, I admire. Um, and then sometimes I, you know, I get stuck in the classic. I read a lot of William Faulkner and Flannery, Flannery O'Connor and um, I believe, uh, gosh, Alice Munro um, and, and those types of, I just, I read everything. And then I read a lot of uh, uh, poetry as well. <laughs> sure. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. In terms of internet presence, um, I know you have a website, so if you can tell people the website as well as social media that you're active on. Yes, um, my website is facenoden.com, www.facenoden.com. I'm completely active on Twitter, though I noticed that a lot of my um, followers and, and bookish friends have departed and went to like hot Hive and Mastodon, I have not done that yet, but so I'm on Twitter and Instagram and I'm also on Facebook. There's, yeah. there's so many to keep track of, right? It is. It is. <laughs> and, and because I do have a day job, I don't, um, I don't get out there as much as I would like to, but every once in a while you'll see my stuff out there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Faye, we've talked about a variety of things today, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to highlight at this point? No, I think this was pretty good. I, I would say that uh, I would encourage um, everyone out there, and if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably already a reader, but see if you can go out there and recruit more people to read. <laughs> I mean, it's almost reading is so important that um, like uh, like you were saying, Sarah, anything and, you know, get just just get people and get kids and get everybody to start reading because that's it's really important. Yeah. My, my dad was a librarian and he would completely agree with you. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about A Killing Rain and the series as a whole. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you for having me on the show. Thank you again to Faye for joining me to talk about A Killing Rain and, of course, A Killing Fire a little bit as well. Looking forward to the rest of the series, finding out uh, what happens to Raven, what happens to some of the other characters in the story, and how they all continue to evolve or maybe not as the series goes on or, you know, grow and figure out what they're doing with their lives. 
So if you are a fan of crime, of mystery, of uh, a little bit of creepy serial killerness, <laughs> it's the, that's not a thing. Um, but if you're a fan of this type of book, and especially if you like books that are also series, then you should definitely check out both A Killing Fire and A Killing Rain. And of course, as you're all shopping for the holiday season, maybe you are looking for books for someone in your life. Maybe you're not a fan of this type of book or uh, what have you, but someone you know is. Uh, this is an option for you. Look it up and um, see if it might be something that you or someone that you know who loves to read might be interested in. Thank you, as always, for joining me. I hope that you will join me for the next episode. It'll be uh, the second time that I've talked to somebody about a graphic novel, but the last time, if you remember, the graphic novel was historical fiction, so very different. This one is The Rise of Dracula and the Cult of Dracula, fantasy, science fiction, that genre, so a little different than historical fiction, but if that is um, a genre and a way of reading that you are fond of, then definitely join me for that interview. The author is Rich Davis. So join me for that on the next episode. In the meantime, hope you're having a great week. If you are a fan of this podcast, please do me what I always ask you to do. If you have not done so already, if you've already done so, just ignore me. But if you have not liked, follow, subscribe on the platform that you listen to the podcast on, please do so. That gets you the episodes as soon as they come out. You can also leave a review on those platforms. That is great, wonderful, helps to get the podcast out to more listeners. You can leave a starred review or a written review, whichever you're more comfortable with, and also follow on social media. You can find the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Love, love, love hearing from you. If you had a long weekend, I hope it was wonderful. Uh, and if you did have a long weekend, I hope you're easing back into the work week as you, you know, sometimes it's hard to go back, but it is Tuesday. So hopefully you've eased back in pretty well. Whatever this week's what this week brings you, as always, I hope it brings you plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.